SingingTV.com. Hey singers, I'm Sarah Lee, and this is SingingTV.com. Together, you and I, we are making singing simple. Uh, and I'm back today. I know it's been a long time. I've taken a little bit of a breather because, of course, I've been working on Voxer Size, um, which should be out in the next few months, uh, hopefully a late 2017. So uh, look at BoxerSize.com for that. I'm really excited about it. But, of course, uh, I wanted to come back both in preparation for that and also because I've been asked by many a YouTuber, come back. We've got more questions. So first of all, I want to say that if you have questions um, that you'd like me to answer as an episode, I would love, love, love to do it. So please tweet me, Instagram me, Facebook me at Sarah Leib, S-A-R-A-L-E-I-B, like boy. Um, okay, so today's kind of a short and sweet episode to get us back into it. The question came from Twitter actually quite a while ago, and it said, is there any uh, cure for tone deafness. Is there any cure for tone deafness? The answer is, the answer is sort of simple and sort of difficult. Uh, what I would say is that basically most people who say they're tone deaf aren't. It's a really small segment of the com uh, of the population uh, who are actually tone deaf, meaning um, they can't can neither hear the difference nor reproduce uh, matching pitch. So you know, if I say ba and you go ba. You're not tone deaf. If I go ba and you go ba, also not tone deaf. If I go ba and you go ba, and I go try it again. Let's listen. Ba and you go ba. There's a chance, but still, it's not necessarily true. Um, so the cure for tone deafness or thinking you're tone deaf, perhaps not having great pitch matching skills or having um, a really untrained ear is basically ear training. Um, and when we talk about ear training, there are a lot of things we've talked in, in other episodes about learning um, intervals, that's really important. But um, intervals, understanding what, what all the 12 intervals are, ascending and descending. But if, if you're talking about something that's, that's more serious than that, having a really hard time matching pitches, um, we start way, 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 way earlier than that. Um, and here's what we do. We start with things like playing one and, you know, playing two notes and tell me, is the second note higher or lower? So here we go. Let me do it one more time. The first note is here, second note's here. And can you tell me, is the second note higher or lower in pitch? So of course, most of us will hear that the second note was higher. Some of you might have a little bit more trouble hearing that. Um, what about this? Was the second note higher or lower? In that case, it was higher. It was an interval of a perfect fifth. Forgot to tell you about the first one. And here's the third example. Second note, higher or lower? So in that case, the second note was lower. It was actually a full octave interval of, of, of an octave. Um, and it was lower. So what we first have to do is train our ear just to hear simple things like, is the pitch higher or lower? Every once in a while, somebody will hear something and won't think high, low. They'll think um, in terms of speed, uh, which is kind of neat. A, a colleague just told me about a, a kid who said, what are you talking about? That's not higher or lower. That's faster, meaning um, more vibrations, higher frequency vibrating faster, that's the same as higher, but I, I thought that was kind of an interesting thing. Um, I'd never heard anybody say, but uh, everybody has different ways that we think about things. And unless you're trained to think of pitches as a frequency spectrum from oh, to very, very high, then, then how are you really going to know? So first I would say, just start by hearing what's higher, what's lower. Is that higher? Is that lower? You can start with actual pitches, and you can even just go out in the world and go, okay, you know, I hear this, a low hum. Mm, mm. I hear birds, because that's what's outside the studio. That's what you'd hear if you walked outside, um, of like, you know, electric things, and tweet, 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 tweet. The bird tweeting is higher in pitch than that low hum. Um, 
So simple things like that. And then actually, um, there's a process that I've used with clients before. I've had a couple clients who've had um, needed some work on ear training, uh, weren't toned up, but just needed help with that. And after a couple months, I'd say did really, really well. And what we started with was simple things like higher, lower, and then matching pitch. And just matching pitch can take kind of a while. If I'm talking about this, um, people are very quick to go, hey, here, I'm gonna sing the note. What I'd first like you to do is a three-step process. Um, you go, close your eyes, hear it, um, then think it, and then sing it. Um, and the reason I do that, uh, that I want you to hear it and just sort of let it be in your mind, that's step one. Step two uh, is you're actually seeing then if you can get your vocal cords, your musculature of the larynx to coordinate with what your brain's hearing. And then the third step is actually singing it and doing it. So those are three very distinct separate steps. Um, and I think if you're jumping to do things quickly or more quickly than that, um, it can lead to disappointment. Like, why didn't I get it right? Slow down the process, as of course we say with everything. And I think you'll find that a lot easier. Um, hope you liked the new intro. I thought the intro was cool. Uh, write something in the comments or um, get at me on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or something. Tell me what you think. At Sarah Lieb. Hope that helped. Uh, and I forgot to tell you who asked that question. Where is it? Tweeted by DJ Girl. DJ G R L. So if you're watching, thanks for the question. Hope that was helpful. Uh, I'm Sarah Lee. This is SingingTV.com. Together, you and I are making singing simple.